Jesus came to take away our sin. He came to take away our sin, take it away, and then put the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God in us. Amen. Today is the 21st. Today is the 21st of the of the 7th and 2013. Today's message, we're going to be looking at the Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we're going to take a psalm from there in a minute, and we're going to work with that. But before we go there, let's turn in our Bibles to Luke 4.18. And while we're doing that, we can thank the Lord that Brother Patrick, Brother Edie, I, I know the pronunciation may not be right, who came this morning to hear the word that he'll be blessed in the hearing of the word. Amen. Luke 4. And there's just something I want to touch on that I didn't emphasize last week because we finished up the message of the cross and the outworking and then we went on to the the Nazarene nailed it, the sequel and how the Lord came to do certain things and he has done them. We have great victory in Jesus, amen? Yes. And uh, we have great blessings. And we're going to look at that later on today. Once again, the blessings of the Lord. Luke 4, 18, and it reads, Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. To the captives, recover your sight. To the blind, set at liberty those who are oppressed. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. All preaching, preaching, preaching. It's all preaching. So, uh, as I've said before, when I was uh, only a young boy, my heart was crying out to do things for people. I wanted to do things for people, you know. I wanted to do the ultimate thing for people, for my mother, for my family, for my mates. And I, I grew up in a gang of 10, 12 boys in our area and I wanted to give them everything. And I did. I gave them everything I had in the natural and uh, shared everything I had. But I, want, I had this thing in my heart, you know, that I wanted to give the best of the best. And, and the Lord gave that to me so I could give the truth. And it's the best of the best. So I just want to emphasise on one part there in Luke 4, 18. Recovery of sight to the blind. And when we look at Jeremiah 1, 5, that the Lord said uh, to Jeremiah, I knew you before you entered the womb. Now, in reference to recovering our sight, we were all born blind. All of us were born blind, in other words, in sin. And the recovery of the sight comes uh, from the Word of God. It gives us sight. It gives us insight. The sight is so grand, it gives us insight. Amen? Amen? So the Lord wants to recover and restore and give us our sight back the sight we had before we were born of the womb i knew you before you were born of the womb and he's gradually bringing that back to us that we may see as he sees things amen that we may uh, know as he knows and when the day comes and the upward call of the people comes and uh, some say the rapture, but that word's not in the scriptures. So I steer away from using it. But the upward call is there. Caught up on the clouds with a shout, the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God will sound, and the dead in Christ who are in the graves, who are right with Christ when they die, will be taken up into the air. And then those who are remaining on the earth it says, who are alive, 
Hey, those who are remaining and alive, they have a living relationship going with Jesus. A living, loving relationship. They will then follow, but by no means precede those in the grove. Caught up in the air. Amen. And that's when we will become the manifested sons of God. We're not manifested sons of God yet. We're sons of God by faith only. We must run the race to the end. We must operate according to the rules, at least the athletic is not, the athlete is not crowned. There's a lot of drug and doping in athletics today, whether it's Tour de France, whether it's the, the world sprinters or whatever, and they're drugged up and it's unfair. They might have won, but they won on unfair conditions. Well, Jesus won't have that either. We must compete in this marathon, this uh, uh, messianic marathon. We must compete according to the rules, according to the doctrine of the Christ. It's no good the minister robbing the congregation. It's no good the minister lying. It's no good the minister putting heavy burdens on the congregation and not helping them. That's not according to the rule. The minister is the servant of the congregation. The minister is there to serve. The minister is there to prioritise the truth. The minister there is there to make sure that people are putting all their eggs in the one basket called the Christ. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. The Lord came to take away the sin. And when that happens, boy, oh boy, there's joy unspeakable. Amen? Amen. So it's a process, the recovering, transforming again of the mind by the word, the washing of the word. We need to be brainwashed by the pure water, the, the true wine from the true vine. Amen? And then we're, we're, we're legally drunk, aren't we? When, when I know, and I was a drunk, you know, <laughs> coming from the Irish, of course. But I was a drunk. Eight days a week I was drunk. That's my testimony. Drugged out of my brain nine days a week. Concentration level of minus three. Brain of a small bird. Hey, chain smoker, mouth like a sewer. But Jesus, he takes the weak the foolish and the abased. Eh? And he says, I will dust this one off, wash him down, cleanse him, empower him, deliver him. Hallelujah. And I will use him for my glory. And they will look and they will say, but hang on a minute, this fellow hasn't been educated. He, 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 he hasn't got all the flash of the world. This man hasn't been to Bible college. Of course I haven't. How dare you go to Bible college when we are gifted? Ephesians 4.11, hey? You can go to a Bible college and get a certificate. I had two reverend certificates and I never went to a Bible college to get them. Those who gave them to me recognised the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. Honorary, honorary, which is greater than doing six, seven years. Study. They automatically said, well, this guy's got it all in anyway. And they had the witness of that with the laying on of hands of 40 ministers in Iloilu City in the Philippines. Come on now. But my, my, my uh, 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 praise and, and, and my exaltation is the Christ, the one who took me out of darkness and brought me into the glorious light. So we know that when we're dealing with Jesus, we're going to get our just desserts and more. Hey? We're going to get our... When he calls you to do something, he'll equip you to do it. You can't learn to be a pastor. You can't learn to be an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, an evangelist. You've either got it gifted, you either got the goods or you haven't. Ephesians 4.11, he who ascended and descended gave gifts to men. Gifts. It's a gift. A pastor is a gift. The, 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 the actual office and the call is a gift. And the pastor is a gift to the congregation from God. If he's a true pastor, it's a blessed gift. Hey? If it's a false pastor, it's a horrid gift. But false prophets for false people. Can you say amen? amen. 
You can say, oh my, oh why. I'm going to say, hallelujah. False prophets for false people. If you say, oh, I've been sitting in this church. Oh, look, everyone here knows it. Sister Eli knows it. Sister Sue knows it. Brother Osara knows it. Sister Valetta knows it. Brother Sam knows it. You know, the whole congregation know it. If, you, if your heart is wayward, he's going to give you a wayward minister. Amen. If your heart says uh, to the Lord, I want the truth, he'll make sure you get the truth. Because the scriptures are faultless, infallible, absolute. They're, the word of God is an ultimatum. And that's why most people don't want to hear the word of God. They want a version of it. They want the Assembly of God version or the Seventh-day Adventist version or they want the, the, the Episcopal version or the Anglican version or, or the uh, COC, CCC, Hungry Jacks, KFC. They want any version but the Christ version. Huh? And when we get the Christ version, we know we have to let go of our sin, don't we? he he come to take it away. He didn't come to take it round the corner so you could have a nibble tomorrow. He said, I come to take it away. He came to take away. Away? Away. Yahweh came to take it away, the sin of the world, and have, mer have mercy on us. That's how he shows his mercy, abundant mercy, by taking away our sin. God wants to be merciful, yeah? He don't want to judge you damned. He prefers mercy rather than to judge you damn. And his mercy is given to the humble. Hey? He gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the power. Brother Clifford, he gives power to the humble that we may overcome our sin. Hey? When you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, which is the word of God, the doctrine of the Christ. When we humble ourselves before his mighty hand, you know what he's going to do? He's going to empower you. He gives power. Grace is power. He's going to give power to the humble. Hey? You look at all the, the true apostles and prophets of old, they were powerful men. All the, the, the evangelists in the Bible, prophets, those who were true followers of the Lord, they were powerful men and women. Because eh? they humbled themselves under the, the unadulterated word of the Lord. Nothing added to, nothing taken away. Eh? Not living in the Old Testament. We don't live in the Old Testament. You know, I'm living in the 70s. I'm living in the 70s. Ba, 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 ba. No, I'm not living in the 70s and I'm not living in the Old Testament. I'm living in the now, in the Christ. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, and that is beautiful indeed. So, moving right along, we know it's a heartache, isn't it? Nothing but a heartache. Love until your arms break. Then they let you down. It's a fool's game. Nothing but a fool's game. It is a fool's game in the world. People loving people that don't love them, you know. The Lord Jesus tells us very clearly, you can put all your trust in human beings and be let down. Hey? You can put, the Lord don't want you to do that. The Lord wants you to put all your trust in him. The Lord wants you to give him preeminence. Colossians chapter 1 says it very clearly, doesn't it? That we give him the preeminence. Let's read it in Colossians 1, 18. Just confirm that we give him the preeminence. That's why he done all things. Everything wasn't done for you. Everything was done for him. Colossians chapter 1. Hey? Colossians chapter 1 and the verses 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may, in all things, in all things, he may have the preeminence. Let's read uh, verse uh, 16. For by him all things were created, Colossians 1, 16, by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. 
He is the head. He, he, he done all this. He done all this. That he, everything you see, everything that is, is done so that he may have number one position. That he may be glorified. Jesus. Hey? Some people uh, glorify Father. The Bible doesn't tell us to glorify Father. The Bible tells us to glorify Jesus. Let's read it. Let's just confirm that. Let's just confirm that. Father is Father. Let, let's go to the writings of John, please. John 16. John 16. See what the scriptures say. Hey? John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Listen, John 16, 14. He will glorify me. Jesus. Red writing. He will glorify me. John 16, 14. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that Father, that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Jesus is the one glorified. Father calls. Jesus saves. Father doesn't save us. Jesus does. Holy Ghost guides and teaches, quickens. Amen? Amen. As long as we got that straight. Hey? It's a heartache, nothing but a heartache. Without, without putting all your eggs in the one basket called Jesus. It's a heartache. Hey? Misplaced efforts, misplaced finances, misplaced. Look, Jesus never come to take your money away. <laughs> he come to take your sin away. You're going to need that money. <laughs> hey? he, he, he doesn't live on earth. He is omnipresent and he's seated on the throne at the right hand of Father. He's not on a cross. He's not in a grave. He's not in a tabernacle in a temple. He is in our hearts and he is on the throne and he is omnipresent. Someone say amen. amen. Hey? It's a heartache. Sin is a heartache. Sin is painful, isn't it? Sin is painful. It brings a curse with it. So let's go in to the message today. Eh? We're going to read out Psalm 1 today. Our message is going to come out of Psalm 1. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Our message will come out of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, Come on now. <clears throat> Nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does it shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. They're like chaff, which the wind drives away, brother. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Oh, hallelujah. Hey? Ungodly. Ungodly. Ungodly are sinful, very bad, and mischievous people. Let's have a look at verse 1 today. Blessed is the man, I say, and the woman, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Walk, stand, and sit. Hey? Blessed. We need to know what blessed means. Blessed means heavenly happy. Blessed does not mean happy. The world they know happy. 
Even the seven dwarfs, no happy. Hey? Now I'm talking heavenly, heavenly happy. Jesus said, I came to, to give life and to give it abundantly. Hallelujah. And, and when someone's born of the womb, born in sin, born blind, they don't know what's good for them. They don't know the value, true value of anything. I know I didn't. They know the price, because they look at the price tag, but to identify the true value. There's a lot of people out there in churches and in pulpits spending their time making the almighty dollar. I know that uh, uh, we need money to operate in this world. I'm not saying we don't. I, I, I'm not saying we don't need to work. I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying uh, making money a priority. The Lord tells us through Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians that people who make money a priority and desire to be rich, they pierce themselves through with many troubles. Amen? So the Lord is not about money. The, the Lord has greater riches than gold to give his people. The Lord says that the word of God is sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Amen? And those who know me know that I've had many a heavy blow, but I still stand today at the age of 56 uh, feeling 21, 22. You know what I mean? And maybe looking around about... No, I must not exalt myself. I let the Lord exalt me if I'm to be exalted, or someone else. Amen? So, sinners are not blessed. Blessed is the man and the woman who walk not in the counsel, in the advice, in the recommendations and the plans of the ungodly. Let's go to Matthew 5, please. Hey, blessed, heavenly happy. The world is full of advice. The world is full of recommendations. The world is full of plans. They've got their own plans. They've got their own way of doing things. They've got their own way of solving the problems of the world. Amen? But the Lord has a way too. Hey? And the Lord has his rules. The Lord has his law. The law has his doctrine and teaching and it's there to bless us. Hey? The new covenant says that we're to love the Lord Jesus, the Christ, first. It's the great command. It's not a command. It's the great command. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. He gets preeminence, doesn't he? Then love your neighbour it's a love covenant. Then love your neighbour as you love yourself. Eh? Then you can't love your neighbour as you love yourself until you love Jesus first, until he gets preeminence. And then he gives you the ability. He gives you the power to love your neighbour as you love yourself. Eh? Not a little bit less. You know what I mean? I'm eating Wagyu beef and the neighbour is eating... Sausages, you know, man, that sort of thing. You don't mind giving them a few snags, you know. You don't mind them giving them a shirt from Vinnie's or something, you know what I mean? But we're wearing the Italian suit or whatever. No, love your neighbour as yourself. That is very hard. It's a big ask for the carnal mind because the carnal mind is at war, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the carnal mind is at war with God. Romans. It says the carnal mind is enmity with God. It, it, it cannot accept what he says, hey? Which is why we must be born again. Born a second time. This time of a man, not of a woman. Son of man, yeah? Jesus. Born of the spirit that raised him from the dead. John 3, 5 says, born of water and spirit. A lot of people think that's water baptism. No, stagnant water is not rebirth. Polluted water. Every water on the earth is polluted. We're born of, this is the water here, the Word. And the Holy Ghost. Yeah? 
Praise you, Jesus. Born of the word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Confess with your mouth to salvation. Believe in your heart to righteousness. Yeah? Any water yet? No. No water yet, is it? Confess with your mouth to salvation. Romans 10, 9, I think it is. Believe in your heart to righteousness. That Father raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's read Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed! That's our message today. The title of our message today is Blessed! Blessed! Is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Yeah? I mean, how about if I said to you, how about if I said, oh, I, I, well, I do say to my son and daughter, you, you'll get a blessing, brother. I say to Brother Shadrach, you, I'll, I'll bless you. Don't worry about it. You just go and do this for me. You'll be blessed. My mum used to say to me, oh, go, can you go to have the shop for me, love? You'll get rewarded. Don't worry. You know, bless, and I get my reward. I get my blessing. I get my reward, yeah? I get my reward. Well, he's saying to the poor here, blessed are the poor who walk in the spirit, yeah? Because they're going to enter the kingdom. But you know, there's a lot of poor, and I've mentioned this before, a lot of poor that are on their way to hell because they're not walking in the spirit, are they? They're not led by the spirit. They're not born of the spirit. Come on. They're not washed in the blood. <laughs> but blessed! Ha! Ah! Ha! Ah! Blessed! Heavenly happy, that means. Blessed means heavenly happy. Do a search on the word. Do, 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 do an in-depth search. Heavenly happy. You know the poor? Those who are poor in the third world country? You introduce one of them to the Lord and they really do get introduced to the Lord and they get that touch from the Lord which is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hey? I'm talking revelation knowledge. Jeremiah 3.15 I will give you pastors. I will give you shepherds that will feed you. Feed you. Feed you. Hungry. Hungry for righteousness. The Lord will give you a pastor that will feed you with understanding and knowledge. Hey? That's why we're, we go astray. That's why we, we, that's why we walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We, we don't have understanding. We don't have knowledge. Hey? We must thirst for it. We must thirst for understanding. We must thirst. We must hunger. And you will be fed. You will be fed. As, as Brother Patrick, uh, 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 Brother Edie says, he, he, he came here this morning. He didn't even know it was a church here. He didn't wonder what it was. What sort of thing is that? You know what I mean? I mean, they said that about Jesus, didn't they? They said, what? Him the king? You're joking, aren't you? Him? That's that poor people down the road. Joseph and Mary. That's the king. Because they were optical religious people. They weren't mathematical, were they? They didn't know how to calculate properly. Hey? We appear poor, making many rent. Hey? We appear poor, but making many rent. And so Brother Edie come in. And he had a listen, and, 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 and the, the Spirit of the Lord has been here since my wife and I and the children rolled up here this morning to set up. Hey? Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. Hey? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he said, wow, I don't know what's happening here, but here I am. And then he went to go home. And, and, and he said, oh, I just realised I've locked my keys in my hands. I can't even go home. <laughs> hey? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then he had a, a vision and a dream that there's all these people going up in the air and he heard the voice of the Lord say, not everyone will be going. Not everyone will be going. 
Well, I tell you what, how did he know our message? <laughs> That's the message of this church. Not everyone will be going. As you see on our little sign outside, it says, We are a, 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 not the, a holy remnant church. We are of the holy remnant. We do not say, as cult leaders and false prophets do, I'm the only one who has the truth. I'm the last prophet. Oh, rubbish. Jesus gave prophets. He who ascended and descended gave prophets to his church. Apostles, plural, teachers and evangelists. They are scattered throughout the world. Amen? We're just one of the little flocks of the holy remnant. So the poor, blessed are the poor who walk in the spirit. Hey? Blessed. The poor can have that assurance. It doesn't really matter. Here I am. I'm born here. I'm born into this in the flesh and now I'm going to get born again out of this. <laughs> I'm going to get born into being in finite air. You got millionaires, you got billionaires, you got Bill Gates and then you got saints. <laughs> you got in finite airs. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed are we, we have understanding and knowledge. Blessed are we, we're the most advantaged people on the earth. Oh, don't go away, Jesus, the disciples said, don't go away. Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, I'll send another. Woo! And he's closer than a mother. Woo! He's the paraclete, the helper, the Holy Ghost. Woo! And he will guide you. He will lead you into all truth. Woo! And he will be forever talking of me. Jesus the Christ. Hey? <laughs> Jesus the Messiah. Hey? His name is not Jesus Christ. He is Jesus the Christ. He is the Christ. Yeah? Hallelujah. So, blessed are the poor and the who walk in the Spirit. Blessed are the rich who walk in the Spirit. Blessed, even the rich can be blessed. We go back to James and we see the rich and the wealthy, they can store extra treasure in heaven by giving away their riches on earth and storing it in heaven. Amen? But that's from the heart. That's, that's the whole walk. That the whole covenant is about the heart. Not whether you come to church with shoes on. I don't care if you come to, shoe, to church barefoot or you come uh, with an old singlet on. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me if you come to church and you sit before me and you hear the word and you say yay and amen and you go out and you don't do a thing that was said. Because that's what they did before Ezekiel the prophet. He said, they sit before me and they listen. They go, oh, ee, wow. Ooh. And then they go away and they don't do one thing that I said. Yeah? They're hearers but not doers. Self-deceived, James says. Amen. So the Lord has blessed me so that I can bless. He's blessed me with the truth. He's blessed me with his word. He's, he's filled me with his word. He said, I will put my word in you and, and I will draw on that in the time of need. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say because it won't be you speaking, it will be Father speaking through you. Amen? <laughs> That's what the word of God tells us. So blessed, blessed, blessed. Sinners are not blessed because they're sinners. But blessed. Blessed is the man and the woman who walk not in the advice and the recommendations and the plans of the ungodly, the sinner, the world. But how many church people today are walking in the plans, the recommendations and the advice? They've got a new thing coming up on the television this week about tough love and they've got men dressed in commando uniform disciplining disciplining children 
who are rebellious. And only recently I was ministering to one of the congregation about taking the stick to their child and I gave the scriptures, spare the rod and spoil the child and even beat the child and save the child's soul from hellfire. But here's these grown men in camouflage uniforms getting the children in arm locks and headlocks and I thought, this is the council of the world. The heart's still the same, friend. You can, you can do anything you want. You know what I mean? The counsel of the world is ungodly. The counsel of the man and the woman who are born of a woman is guaranteed their advice, their counsel and plans are ungodly and unblessed. Amen. But blessed are we because we have the counsel of of the counsellor. He's called the counsellor. The counsellor. Right? We have his counsel. We have his advice. We have his plan. We have his guidance. And we know that we're going to be blessed if we walk ye in it. Right? Let's turn in our Bible to the writings of Psalm 31, please. Psalm 31. Let's go there. Psalm 31. Oh, hallelujah. We'll get started on this message today. Eh? The message is blessed. Psalm 31. Sorry. Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgressions, whose sin is forgiven, whose sin is covered, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute <coughs> sin and in whose spirit there is no guile, no deceit. Blessed, blessed. No money mentioned, brethren. No money mentioned. Heavenly happy. <coughs> King David speaking. He knew about sin, didn't he? King David was a called man. King David was a poet, prophet, a writer, a warrior, a king. King David was a blessed man. Blessed, he said. Blessed. None of the things of the earth mentioned. He's talking heavenly happy. Look, I know what it's like to be a sinner I was the sinner of sinners. Paul said that. Everyone that's been touched by God, everyone that's been forgiven of vile acts, say, I'm the sinner of sinners. Used to be, but not anymore. Past tense. The scripture reads in Isaiah, all have, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of of the heavenly father of lights in whom there's no change or variance. There is no change with the Lord. It's a straight and narrow road. There is no variance. There is no contradiction. When the spirit of the Lord ministers, it is pure, proven, like silver in the furnace, seven times. Hey? So our scripture here reads, Heavenly happy are those whose sins have been forgiven. The ungodly are not heavenly happy. The ungodly, they are unhappy. The ungodly or the sinner, they are frightened. The ungodly or the sinner, they are deluded. The ungodly, they're not heavenly happy. They're deceived. The ungodly, they are not Prepared. Prepared. If if you, let's read it, Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you walk in that counsel, you will be deluded. You will be deceived. You will not be prepared. There's only one counsel that we can walk in where we're going to be heavenly happy, where we're going to be uh, totally secure. 
blessed assurance. We have that heavenly happy assurance that Jesus is mine. That we have a foretaste. Oh, what the foretaste of a glory divine is of salvation. I born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Saviour. All the day long, hey? All the day long. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Oh, look. There's nothing good can come of it. Oh, but it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. It was a bit like Samson and Delilah, wasn't it? It was a bit like like Adam and Eve. It was a bit like like um, the devil came along with this other council and managed, as Paul said, I don't know how this really happened, but managed to deceive the woman. Paul speaks about it in Corinthians. I fear at least how the serpent deceived Eve in the garden. So when I uh, depart, many will be deceived. Hey? And the devil came with this other counsel. We know by the scriptures that there is other counsel. There's another counselor. There's, there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. Hey? That there is another way out there that seems right but is not right. Seems means apparent but not in reality. There is only one way that is right. And that's the righteousness of God Almighty through Jesus Christ. The true doctrine of the Christ. Let's turn in our Bibles to Luke please. Luke chapter 6. This is my story. Oh, look, replaces everything, doesn't he? he? He's the pearl of great prize, bestowing all things to know him. Hallelujah. Whoo! Luke 6 and verse 46. Brother, Luke 6 and verse 46. Yes. Why do you call me your Lord when you do not do the things which I say? Luke 6, verse 46. Why do you call me your Lord? You do not do the things which I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is likened to. He is like a man building a house who dug deep, Laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house, could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Luke 6, 49. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently immediately. It fell, and the ruin of that house was great. And that's our lives. When we build on the earth, it says, we, we build a house on the earth. We need to build our house on the rock. We need to build our house in heaven. Our house needs to be in heaven. We need to be looking for that heavenly country where righteousness dwells. Right? That we look forward to that. Like when you look forward to an event 
and it, you're forever pondering upon it. Going to the beach, having that barbecue, as people do in the world, they think, oh, this will be great. We're going on holidays, you know. It's going to be four long weeks of escape. And that's what it is. It's just an escape, isn't it? To the great southeast. Or the great southwest or whatever. East coast. They're just es escaping. They, they can't help it. They have to get away. I've got to escape. We gotta get out of this place. If it's the last thing we ever do. Girl, there's a better life for me and you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when you're with the Lord, ah! You don't want to go on holiday. <laughs> I've been 26 years preaching and I haven't had a holiday yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because every day is a holy day. Amen. <laughs> every day is a jubilee day. When the sun has set you free, you will be free indeed. Every day is a jubilee day. A day of freedom. Eh? He was like a man who built his house dug deep. See? Dug deep. we got to be dug deep people. We gotta dig into the word. It's not, not good enough just to hear the word on a Sunday and oh yeah. Oh that was good preaching, yeah. And then all the week is just occupied with the world and carnality. The devil's gonna rob you. Hey? The devil's gonna rob you. Because you're not walking in the counsel of the godly. The blessed are those who walk in the doctrine of the Christ day after day after day. Look, we're a word church. We're a word church. We don't mind giving to the poor. We give to the poor. From the moment I started ministry, I gave to the poor. From the day one. From day one, I had that conviction to give. And, and it's still being done. I'm only an instrument and the, the finances come in and the poor don't get all, they get a portion. Amen? The priority is the word. The printed word. DVD, CD, MP3, printed word. Books, write-ups, manuscripts. It all costs money today. Very expensive. That's the priority. Because you can't just live by bread alone. And I like to stand down there in the street next bakery on me right, bank on the left. I'm stuck in the middle. Eh? Whoo! Bread to the left of me, banker to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. You know what I mean? And I'm preaching when they're getting their bread and going into the car, you know. Yeah, we see shut up that preacher. And I'm yelling out, you cannot live by bread alone. Put by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then someone comes out of the bank there and I'm there. If your God is money, oh, how sad it is. Because money grows wings and flies away. Money can't save your soul. You can't buy your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. You must obey your way to heaven. Hebrews 5, 9. Whoo! He, Jesus, the Christ, is the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him. <laughs> Purifying the soul by obedience to the truth. Hey? Not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? How can I be your Lord? You can't be. Dug deep, dug deep into the rock, hey? into the word, Jesus, the rock of our salvation, the stone that the buildings and the builders of the buildings rejected. And we know Jesus was a carpenter, don't we? But he never built a building. Paul didn't build a building. Peter didn't build a building. Jude didn't build a building. Silas didn't build a building. 
Why didn't we have a blueprint of a building in the New Testament? Because it's a spiritual walk. We're passing through. He dwells within. Know ye not, know ye not, know ye not. You are the building of the Holy Ghost. Woo! And what does Paul say again? He says that we are living buildings. We are living stones being built up. As a spiritual house. Amen? Yes. yes. Bless! I think we're going to have to have part two. By the looks of it, I haven't started yet. We'll just get through the prelude in a minute and then we'll start. We'll get into the meat of the message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless! Bless is the man. Heavenly happy. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. The only explanation I can find is the word that I'm reading here today. The word of God will take you up. The scriptures say, faith comes by hearing the word. Oh, faith. Those who wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and not get weary. They will run and not faint. Those who wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the word. Those who will read the word. Those who will accept the word. Those who will walk in the word. You can't help but go up to the top level. Hallelujah. Elevator up. You just press that knob that says doctrine of Christ and you go up to the top level. Taking off. Soaring, <laughs> one month later, oh, <laughs> soaring like eagles. Blessed, we have what the world don't have. The world can't have it. The world can't know it. Hey? Our earthly fathers give us good gifts, and they're evil. How much more will Father give you the Holy Ghost? That's everything. You don't have the Holy Ghost. If your minister don't have the Holy Ghost, if you ain't moving in the Holy Ghost, if you're not moving in the Spirit, you're just a dead religion. You're just like the Buffalo Club. Hey? But the Holy Ghost makes the difference. Hey? Go nowhere! Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Till you're endeared with power from on high. Don't go anywhere, because you'll go down. But when you're endued with power... Come what may, I send you out as sheep among wolves and lambs among savage wolves. Hey? That's how he sent us out. You say, oh, he's a sadist. No, he's with us. Hey? He's with us. It doesn't matter. He knows that humans love adventure. He knows we love a challenge. He knows we love to see the miraculous. He knows we want to touch the untouchable and see the invisible. He knows all this. Because he made us. He knows our fibre. He tries our reins. He knows our hearts. He called us. He appointed us. He anointed us to do all specific jobs. Can you say amen? amen. Blessed. Blessed. Heavenly happy are we. Blessed. <laughs> hey, blessed is the man who walks not in that council. We walk in one council. We take the council of the counsellor. And people everywhere today, they're going to the psychiatrist, they're going to the psychologist, they're going to uh, the witch doctor. You know, my friend, the witch doctor, he told me what to do. Boom, 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 boom. You know, they're going to the, the shamans, they're going to <laughs> everyone. And it's all a failure. It's all a dead end. It's all misery. They're paying top dollar. They're paying $200 an hour for some psychiatrist to say, come and lay on my leather lounge that you bought and put some more money in my bank account for me so I can lie to you. But Jesus, his counsel is free. Free. And freely is given. He gave to me freely. Now I must freely give. Hey. Eh? He gave it to me freely. He gave it to me to write and to preach and to teach freely. Now I give freely. You know, there, there is teachers, then there's teachers. We don't want, as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, 
an evangelist. You know, one time I said to a man, uh, my wife knows who I'm talking about, he calls himself a prophet now, he's no more a prophet than I am Elvis. And he, <laughs> I said, no, you, you, you'd be better off uh, doing the teaching. And he thought I meant a bona fide teacher in an office, a, 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 a gifted teacher. Now I'm talking about Matthew 28. He said to his disciples and the whole church, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teach, water baptize, teach them to observe the things that I have taught you. Yeah? Teach them, teach them. What every individual in the congregation can do is teach others what they've been taught. But that doesn't mean they're a teacher. You can go to the street and distribute literature. Doesn't mean you're an evangelist, but you are evangelizing. Hey? You can prophesy. It doesn't mean you're a prophet. You might just have the gift of prophesying. Hey? Come on now. All these things. We... If we're going to be an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, an evangelist, we must be gifted. And then we, you'll know if they're gifted, it will be seen in their writings. It will be seen. Uh, the authority will be there. The anointing will be there. Amen? In whatever they claim to be. You don't need a piece of paper. A piece of paper is an optical thing. It's not a mathematical or a spiritual thing. It's an optical thing. Hey? And uh, we go by the Spirit. We, we, the Lord never said, uh, he who has an eye, let them see what the Spirit is saying. To the seven churches, he who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying, what the Holy Ghost is saying. Hey? You go by, oh, I won't go to that church, it's too small, it's a run-down place, there's not many people there. Everyone's looking in the car park to see how many's there. Say, look, you ugly thing, you're not even sent there by God. Don't bother going there, you'll ruin it. <laughs> you just ruin the whole lot. Please don't come. I say to them, don't. As soon as people say to me in the street, how many go to your church? I said, oh, please don't come. <laughs> please. Can I pay you not to come? Because <laughs> they're just carnal and religious. How many go? How many will be there? Oh, hang, on, hang on a minute. Hang on. What are you looking for? What, the Lord tells us clearly that if you've got the Holy Ghost, He will lead you in all truth. He will lead you. Oh, no, that's how they operate. Oh, 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 oh I'm an AOG. Oh, I'm third generation Baptist. Oh, I know that. I know. I can tell you for sure. By what comes out of your mouth, I know that. You didn't have to tell me. Now, I'm a disciple of Jesus. And I teach people to be disciples of Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that sorts you from all the rest. It sorts you from the one world church, the one world government, the ecumenical church, and the compromise, and, and, and the infiltration of the mixed bag of doctrine. It sorts you out and you become a Hebrews 13, 13 person outside the gate, suffering, outside the religious gate, suffering the reproach of the Christ. Amen? Blessed, blessed. When we don't, when we don't hearken and we, blessed is the man who doesn't walk in it. They might have heard it, some, something said, people tell me all sorts of things. Oh, you need to you need to get a church where people are, where they can see you. Then they'll know you're there. What? King David sitting there in the pasture, smelling a little bit because of the sheep. Huh? Had a few dags hanging off his jacket or something. And he that's I'm talking a king. King sitting on the grass with a stick, watching a handful of sheep. Hey? Well, David, what are you doing? You should be at King College. <laughs> no, no. God had already ordered this. God already ordered me before I was born. You, you will preach, you will teach, 
and you will blow them away with their take-home pay. You know what I mean? <laughs> it will be. They'll say, hey, hey, hang on a minute. Where'd you get this stuff from? And I will bring glory, the Lord said, to his name. He also said, I'll be hated. I'll be despised. So you got to accept that too. If you're going to take the coat of many colours, you know what I mean? you you, you got to accept that. You'll be rejected. But don't worry about it. I'm giving you a head like Adam and stone. Giving you a forehead of, like Adam and stone. I'll be with you like a mighty awesome one. They'll knock you down, but they won't hold you down. Amen? That's the reality of the whole lot. Blessed! Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in that council, who doesn't go in that direction. Blessed. We're the blessed people of the world. Could we go in the council of the counsellor? Hey? Unto us a child was born. Unto us a son was given. And a lamb, a sacrificial lamb, and his name will be called counsellor. Hey? Prince of all peers. Amen? He's the one given to us to guide us. We're not we're not uh, 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 throwing our lives away in a dead world, throwing our time away, throwing our finances away. Throw, we're, we're channeling everything unto Jesus. We're redeeming everything we have, our time, our energy. We're redeeming our mind. We're redeeming everything through the word of God. We're letting him guide. We're letting him call the shots. We're letting him say, Lord, as Paul the Apostle said on the road to Damascus, when the Lord struck him down, what do you want me to do? Hey, not what am I going to do for you. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to fellowship? What do you want me to give? Look, you know the Lord Jesus, he doesn't give a hoot. Everyone in the world, I preached the message, the same message to the poor in the Philippines when I established a mission there in the name of Jesus. Still going on, they're still preaching, they're still rejoicing, they're still continuing to take the word out three years later after the planting. And I said, everyone can give, even the poor. We know by... The, the widow and the two coins, they weren't silver or gold, they were copper, and she gave both of them. I said, but, but, you can't get blessed on your giving unless it's from your heart and you give what you want. It has, to, everything's the heart. The New Testament is the heart, the heart, the heart. Hey? I can show you in Scripture that God does not tell you, command you, what to do with your money. He leaves it in your hands. Isn't that freedom? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? He leaves that in your hands. And we know the scriptures. One bloke said to a, a one man said to another one, "Oh, look, you know, the, we got our inheritance, and and and, and my uh, uh, brother won't give me this, or and he won't give me that." And he said to Jesus, "Can you sort this?" He said, look, it's not for me to, to be sorting that. You do what you want. That's the liberty and the freedom of God. Look, if you want to go in the way of the ungodly, you won't be blessed. You want to go in their counsel, you won't be blessed. You want to go in the counsel of the Lord, you can't help but be blessed. It doesn't say you might be, it says blessed. Blessed. Straight off the hat. It's commanded. It's commanded. Blessing will be upon you if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but in the counsel of the counsellor. Blessing will be upon you. No mention of money. You walk in his counsel. Amen? Amen. Blessed. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands. The ungodly, like I said, the ungodly are unhappy. The ungodly... The ungodly have needs. You know how I know unhappy the ungodly are? Because I was ungodly. I was born ungodly, like every human on the earth. 
Every white man, every black man, every every man in their club. I was born unhappy. Because I was born a sinner. When Adam and Eve sinned, they automatically became unhappy, didn't they? They were unhappy. Sin only brings unhappiness. But the devil tells you it'll bring joy, but it just brings unhappiness. I'll tell you how unhappy the world is. The ungodly. They're so unhappy, they need to put chemicals in their veins, in their mouth. They're so much in the dark. Let, better still, let me talk of me. Let me talk of me. How unhappy I was. I, I, I would put this poison in a brown bottle called beer, which used to rot my liver. My kidneys. And, and, and change my whole personality. Mind altering. Liquid. I, I, I was so unhappy. I was just trying to get happy. So I go into the fields and pick mushrooms. Purple meanies. Blue meanies. And gold top. And we'd make stew. And we'd eat the stew. And we'd walk around like zombies. <laughs> and I thought, hang on, I'm insane. But then the Lord gave me the spirit of sanity. Ow! I have not given you a spirit of fear again under bondage to the things of the ungodly. But I've given you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. <laughs> and he put that spirit in me, that spirit of love. And that spirit of power. <laughs> I can even love my enemy and do good to them. I can say to my enemies after they curse me. As one man came to the fellowship and he hung around and got a few goodies and uh, never bothered to contribute one, one cent. And got his goodies and we helped him out and fed him and blah, blah. And then he turned around and started sending emails to me saying I was the devil. I said, well, the devil looked after you for a while. <laughs> and I had seen him in the street. And I walked up to him and I said, I'm just about to go and have a coffee. Would you, would you like to have a coffee with me? If you think it's all right, if you think I'm worthy. Well, he didn't know what to do. Oh, well, I suppose I could. I suppose I could have a coffee with you. I said, I'll be shouting. And he sat down and had a coffee with me. That's the spirit of power. Spirit of love. Sanity. And he puts that spirit within us. We're so blessed. We're so blessed that we're not seeking vengeance because the counsel of our counsellor says vengeance is his. He'll do a better job on them than me. Whack, whack is only two black eyes or a broken nose and a black eye. Well, when the Lord deals with your enemy, it's a little house of horrors, isn't it? <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He takes the weight. He says, it's all sort that. Get on with what you're doing. I'll sort them out. And every day I pray, Lord, I'm going to ask two things. I'm gonna, I put my enemies and my family's enemies and the enemies of this fellowship and church in your hands. And the second thing, I ask you to bless them. Because <laughs> that's the counsel of the Lord. And you know what? I'm heavenly happy because of that. Hey? Not happy. Heavenly happy. 
The world can't know that. The world can't know that. Blessed, blessed. They they need the drugs. That's how unhappy they are. They, they need to buy new clothes every day. They're so unhappy. They've got new clothes and I want a new one again. They just bought one an hour ago. Oh, I've seen something else that's better. And they need them a new, a new, 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 new. Before you know it, you're a Melda Marcos with 3,000 pairs of shoes and you only got two feet. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Blast! Blessed! How blessed I was when I came to Jesus. I, I get, I got to know me. You know, at the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. At the cross I found Lord Jesus. At the cross I found myself. I never knew myself. I would have been like the rest, you know, running around out there uh, looking for the family tree. You know, the one with the rotten roots. The one with the sin rotten roots. Yeah. Oh, be family tree. Well, I do come from the Celtic, uh, you know, arbitrators of the conciliation of. Oh, we go back centuries, you know. In a world that's seventy billion years old, no, it's not six thousand. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say it's seventy billion years old. And they're, they're out there on a wild goose chase, travelling the world. With the family roots, the family rotten tree. Rotten of the roots. We need to go back to our roots. Who is God? Hey, I'm going to finish up now. And I'm going to go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 11. We'll just finish off on this and we'll continue on again next week. Without blessed, blessed. I saw eleven. I saw Ezekiel, Jeremiah. I saw eleven one. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of it, out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord will be upon him, speaking of Jesus. The seven spirits of the Lord will be upon him. Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord. We have all those spirits in one, the Holy Ghost. We're, we're grounded and rooted in him. Eh? Not some rotten family tree. Everybody said, today's the... 21st, the 7th, 2013. A message today, blessed, blessed. Because we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, the unsaved, or the compromise, even the compromising pastor and compromising Christian in the lukewarm Christian and pastor, they don't walk in their counsel either. Find a pastor who, who's hot for Jesus. On fire. Ow! Because the ladies in church, it says only one type of people will be saved and go on the upward call. Hot. If you're lukewarm, I, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I prefer you didn't know me. Revelation 3, 16, 17, 18. I prefer you didn't know me. I prefer you were cold. To be lukewarm is an insult to Jesus. Hey? Right? It's like a man and his wife. Hey? If the wife's not hot for the husband, the man's insulted. Someone say amen. Yeah? If the wife's not hot for me, I go, hey, what's going on here? I'm not losing my looks, am I? I have to go to the mirror and sort of just, what's happening? Yesterday. All my troubles. Nah, not really. <laughs> hey? We, we must be hot for the groom. We must be on fire for Jesus. We must be watching and waiting for him. No spot, wrinkle or blemish. Waiting for him to come. Be ready when he comes. He will come like a thief in the night. He will come at a time unexpected. 
as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be prior to the coming, exactly the same prior to the coming of Jesus. Not revival, revival. Revival of evil. As it was in the days of Noah. How many? How many were ready? Eight. And that's counting the driver. Amen? <laughs> Not all will go. Not all that call me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. But we prophesied. Cast out demons. We built buildings. Oh, look, we had rock sessions. We jammed and marmaladed. Had marmalade with tea. Chasing ships upon the sea. You know what I mean? we done all this. He said, but you didn't do what I said. Huh? You didn't do it. Why do you call me Lord? You don't do what I said. Will he know you when he comes back that day? Do you know my sweet Jesus? Are you born again? Do you keep his commandments? Are you really his friend? Can you say, oh, I love him and I know he loves me? Will he know you? Will he want to know you? Many say, I know Jesus. Yeah, but will he want to know you? You know what I mean? So I've had people say, oh, yeah, I know Paul Sheehan. I know him, but I don't want to know them. I know, I know him. Where are they? <laughs> They're not here today. Oh, yeah, I know Paul. Oh, he's a mighty man of God. But they're sitting in some compromising church with a lukewarm doctrine. Everybody said, and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey?